All right, everybody, ready? Let's go ahead and get into this. Hmm. When we're talking about humic, we really need to define what that actually is first and foremost, so that there really isn't any confusion about where that phrase comes in because it's used in a lot of different categories and it could mean different things to different people or if it's in a fertilizer mix or if it's dry or granular or this or that or whatever. So let's start at the very beginning and identify some spaces. Now, for this, we're basically talking about humic acid as it can be used by the soil and what that can ultimately do for the plants and rooting and everything else. So let's go towards what its origin is and that way we can define what these spaces and terms actually mean. So number one, humus. Now, if you guys have heard this term, I've probably said it, you probably heard other people say it. Humus is a, a part of the decaying organic matter that's in your soil. Now, organic matter is, <sighs> substances in various forms of decay, but it's still uh, sort of lighter, hasn't really packed together, and it hasn't really formed into what this humus can actually be. But humus and organic matter are often interchanged and they can be spoken about that way. So then there's something called humic substances, and humic substances are decayed organic matter, something that you can actually hit uh, in an alkali bath and extract humic acid out of, and that is also in various forms of decay, compost, um, peat, it, really any sort of organic matter compound uh, that was once a living plant structure or root structure, uh, you, can, you can pull some of that material out of if you process it correctly. So then you're gonna have a fraction of all of this called fulvic acid, which is going to be a lighter molecule, contains a lot more oxygen than humic substances do, less on the carbon side, it's very soluble in water, and uh, it's also very chemically complex, but that's going to split off into sort of a lighter color and a lighter solution than humic does. So then your next fraction is going to be the humic acid. Now that forms from decay, and this material can start to get bound up into lignin and sort of held in place, and it takes another strong alkali solution in order to break that free so that you have that fraction as a usable substance. Then you're also going to have human, not like human. This is human with an I-N, uh, not an A-N, just so that we're not confused. It's, I hope nobody is making humic acid out of human. Soil and green are made out of human? Anyway, human is sort of the leftover stuff that sits down in the bottom. Uh, it does have a lot of agronomic value if it can be incorporated into a soil system, but by this point you've freed up the humic acid into a solution, and now you have this sort of remaining material called human. And uh, that's something maybe we can get into a little bit later. So then finally, you have humates. Now humates are typically classified as something that would be mined, okay? So that would be your Leonardite shale, like what we use. Uh, that has a high, high percentage of humic acid tied into it. So that's what we really need to talk about today is usability of product. So if you wanna go back and click right here to where I did the solubility thing with some humic substances and, and take a look at it, you can feel free to click there um, and, and watch a little bit about how that went sort of explains a little bit of the differences between like soluble and solution and suspension and, and all of that kind of fun stuff. So this acid substance is something that gets locked in as your plant material decays and as organic matter builds up, there is a natural building of this humic acid that starts to come from all of these compounds working together, okay? So when you've got decay, when you've got microbial action, when you've got all these things and it starts to form into that humus layer, there is this fraction that would be the humic acid. Now, the thing with humic acid is it's not readily available unless you're doing something to sort of push it out of that particular substance. So it's a weak acid, but it's a complex acid. And so you can get these chelating effects with other minor elements that are in the soil or with fertilizer that you might be putting with it in order to make it even more plant available, which is cool. But here's problem number one, and this is why adding humic acid to your program is super important. We are missing a lot of organic matter in our soils that we are caring for. That's a problem. It's a problem because this particular function that can happen naturally doesn't happen because we are not 
building organic matter in the soil in order for these processes to work and ultimately give you a greater soil benefit. So one thing that happens is you feed a high nitrogen program into a turf grass scenario. If you're piling it on and you're doing a lot, you are encouraging a lot of microbial activity because they feed off of nitrogen just as much as anything else. And that in turn will chew through some of the building up organic matter that's in the soil and you never really see huge gains. So backing off from your nitrogen a little bit will have an impact on your overall buildup of organic matter. The second thing is if we're feeding, again, a high program that's going to be pushing a lot of top growth, we don't see the roots develop the way they should. And roots need to shed off into the soil and that provides soil food and again, builds up more organic matter over time so that we can have these acids begin to form. So oftentimes when you're looking at like a granular product that might have humic acid in it, for the most part, and I can't speak to every single person's manufacturing process, so this, this is just a for the most part statement. For the most part, linardite shale is being used, it's being crushed, it might be getting reformed to be a little more usable in a ball shape, but the humic acid that's in there is just stuck in there and that is sort of the problem, right? So we have a high content, but that doesn't mean that it's going to release. And so it's not necessarily going to be able to chelate those nutrients or give you much other soil benefit aside from a good carbon source. So when I say carbon source, I'm not saying something that the microbes in the soil can feed on. That is not what this is. This is already, it's gone, okay? So this has already been taken down to a shale level and there's nothing that's going to feed on that carbon. This is a carbon that's just for space. The space I'm referring to is microscopic. Basically you're throwing down housing units for soil life, microbes. And that's good because that's ultimately going to benefit the overall condition of your soil if you are taking those cues from the top and starting to build those root structures down a little deeper so that when they decay, there's more organic matter built up. So one thing that I think is really fun to say, and it's actually kind of difficult, I would encourage you to try to do it multiple times over, is to say what humic acid is. And that is a polyelectrolytic macromolecular structure. Polyelectrolytic macromolecular structure. Polyelectrolytic macromolecular structure. Polyelectro, ugh, that's it. That is, it's tough to say, that's a lot of syllables strung together. Basically what that means is you have a long chain that's tied together and the beauty of this particular chain is it has the ability to both attract cation and anions to it because it's sort of a, a good balance in the soil. So nitrogen is able to attach to it as well as potassium and you're able to move and, and get a good exchange off of this particular molecule because it's kind of like hooking up a jumper cable from one battery to the other, you're just able to move and transmit things through the soil faster, which ultimately is going to benefit your plant. So a couple of the other benefits that you're going to get out of here, and, and they're not massive and rapid changes, but it's something to really pay attention to over time. Number one, humic acid is a great stabilizer and having something that is usable that the plant uh, is going to get some benefit out of because it's working in the soil to chelate and move and shift anions and cations around and get, get things moving the way it's supposed to, this will have a great benefit on your nitrogen as you apply it, making it more useful and more available to the plant, which is huge. That way you do have the ability to put less out and get more bang for your buck. So this is something else that takes some time, but it can be seen and it has been shown in studies. There is a sort of pH neutrality that can end up happening. It's not something that can go in and correct pH like lime would if you needed to bring something up and, and make it move, but the humic acid molecule has a way to sort of shed hydrogen out of the soil structure and that will help in your overall pH balancing as organic matter increases, but this is something that takes a lot of time. So to reiterate, I think it's just really important that everybody understands this. Here are the reasons that you're putting this product down. Here's why. Number one, you will see improved soil structure. That is a hands down, anything you wanna go and search up on humic acid, you will find it. There is an improved soil structure that happens. Uh, you will get greater nitrogen efficiency. Remember, this is not a fertilizer. It really doesn't contain any nutritive value. It's more of 
a tool that you can use to add to something to make it more effective. So you could kind of look at it like this. This guy right here, lot of different tools and you only pull on what you need, right? And I'm gonna give you some examples in the chemical world. We use Humic in our manufacturing process for a lot of different things. So in some products, it's really mainly there for a stabilizer. In other products, it's there to get more carbon into it. In other products, it's there to help chelate some of the other minor elements in it. And in others, it's just there to enhance the overall soil structure. So we use it in manufacturing for different ways. So while you may see it in every single one of our products, the function of that is different. It's kind of akin to this. Like if you need to uh, lime a lawn and you put calcium out to do that, to adjust the pH, uh, dolmetic limestone or calcitic, whatever it might be, you use your calcium for that and it changes the pH. Well, you can also use calcium to flush salts out of the soil. So there's using that for a different uh, use right there on its own. Um, you can use it for obviously plant deficiencies. If, you know, if a plant is showing low calcium and leaf tissue, you can use it for that. So there's, there's three tools for one item. Nitrogen has some similar uses. You use it to feed a plant. You can use it in your, with your weed killer to go out and, and magnify that to get a little bit better uptake and kill plants faster. Or you can even use it to help with some of those fungal issues like dollar spot where you need to feed something out. So now let me try to sum up one more time. So this is why it's important. We are replacing a function that would otherwise be natural in the soil to where plants are able to decay and build up organic matter and, and feed soil microbes and do it in a different way. We're kind of, we're helping to sort of change that, putting in something that should be there that isn't. Uh, we're helping to chelate some of those soil minerals. We do have that effect of extending your nitrogen as well. And overall, just make your plants root better and do better and look better and all the things we like to see. So now I want you to post questions. I want you to throw things down. I tried to make this quick and dirty and fun and easy, and that was just what the goal was here. And now what questions and comments come up can lead to future content. So this is the time where I think it's important that if I didn't address something here, get it down, put it in a comment, and let's see if we can create another video around that. I hope you guys all enjoy your morning. I know I will, and I'll talk to you real soon. See ya. Polyelectrolytic macro macro I can't even do it. I can't do it more than once. It's not more than one.